Hey guys, what's going on? It's me, Castle Perfect, and my mic is all the way up here. Um, I just quickly wanted to follow up on the community post that I created uh, the day before yesterday, where I actually made a little prediction about um, the best counters, or the best counter, in my personal opinion, for uh, Embor now in 7-star raid dance. Um, and, you know, um, I, I just got off work and I decided, you know what, let me just test out my theory. Let's see if the build that I thought would work actually works and um i'll be damned it, it actually works like a charm and i'm just gonna quickly go over it it's just a riparian level 100 uh holding the shell bell item uh, moves earthquake mud slap sword stance and high horse um mud slap um sword stance and high horse are three tms tm moves that you can use solid rock is the secondary ability of riparian that keeps it uh 20 percent um uh, super effective damage reduction which makes him uh, quite sturdy, if uh, if anything. Hits him with uh, for super effective damage. The EV spread is 252 in defense and 252 in HP. Um, and its nature is actually in fish. So I got off work. I picked up my switch and I was like, OK, it's the moment of the truth. And so I jumped right in um, very straightforward. Um, used a mud slap three times as I thought it would go and then I used three times sword stance and then I just mud slap once more after terrestrialization uh, just to make sure that there is always that uh, small chance of Embor missing his move and then it turns out that uh, that a precise sequence of moves is actually incredibly accurate and effective so just real quick again guys riparia versus embora let's jump into it i just really wanted to to show this because i just have a little bit of a proud moment you know obviously you can do certain calculation based on the information that you have and you can come up with great ideas great counters and i have seen many videos on youtube but i haven't seen anyone talking about riparia which is like kind of weird in my personal opinion because it's such an accessible pokemon and at the same time it's so easy to use and the moves it requires are like super easy to acquire as well like this is such an easy pick uh, as a counter for Embor. so let's go ahead and jump right in one of the things that i want to say though is that it is important most of the time to have at least one pokemon that has the ability intimidating one of your npcs obviously if you're doing this solo um it does help out a, a lot actually so so i think that's very important so like i said uh, i'm just going to start off uh the the battle with um just mud slap just three mud slap i'm not even gonna look at hp i'm just gonna go in here and, and see what happens the mud slap already paying off in the first turn making him miss his attack which is great now we're just going to continue mud slapping even further obviously we're gonna regain a little bit of hp based on uh, the damage output and the shell bell item of course and uh, the whole premise of me mud slapping instead of any other move is that i just want to build some energy to terrestrialize and not only that but i also want to drop in those accuracy to make sure that those hard hitting moves uh, have a very very bad time landing so that was the whole strategy behind this and again Red Barrier is a freaking monster. Now you want to wait until your stat changes are nullified, which is on the fourth turn. And now I can terrestrialize, but I'm just going to Sword Dance instead. Uh, reason being is because... And he misses again. Amazing. Amazing example. I don't even have to cut this video. Um, Sword Dance um, instead of terrestrialization and just attacking. The reason for that is because, you know, Heat Clash, which is one of the moves that Ember has, and Flare Blitz they actually hit a little bit harder when you're just ground type right because you're no longer resisted to it but drain punch does hit you for super effective damage which is absolutely fine but drain punch as a, as a, as a, a long standing move is not really that strong even though it's stabbed um you do think that quite nicely with the solid rock um yeah with the solid rock uh, ability of ripe area which is which is just fabulous now one more swords dance here I'm, I'm down to 140 like i say i'm not i'm not even worried now of course bear in mind there is always a possibility that the game's middle thing digital middle finger comes up and hits you in the face with a critical hit that could always happen there is nothing you can do about that 
you cannot predict critical hits that's not a thing that is programmed into the game you just never know when it's going to happen unless of course uh, the opposition uses moves that uh, greatly increase uh, their critical hit chance then you can mostly you know account for that happening more often than not uh, but regardless of the situation now I just terrestrialized and what happens is now I'm just pure drowning type so drain punch does not and I quote does not hit me for super effective damage I am going to go for the earthquake here and man the damage is just mwah, absolutely fantastic it brings me up to about 70 to 80 percent of my full bar hp and uh, again from this point on he's going to change his strategy instead of going for the fighting type move which is super effective uh previously now that i'm purely right ground type he's going to go for the fire type moves which are way more powerful and it's just neutral damage but from this point on there is literally no chance that Ember can actually take me out now there is a little bit of a of a weird situation that could uh, potentially happen um and i'm gonna go for the cheer up go all out here you don't necessarily have to do this uh but it seems to me that just by doing this it kind of increases uh, your your uh, ability to win this a lot easier because the next earthquake that i'm going to use is going to break down the shield without any problems so let's go ahead and do that flare blitz super powerful Embor very powerful again what i just wanted to say oh and i get burned hey the time that that burns happens now keep in mind that you can actually get rid of the burn right we have cheer up heal up and that does remove the the burn effect which is uh something that hasn't happened but just had to happen live here as i'm recording this video um totally fine i'm back to full hp i am burned however but that's fine i'm just going to go for the heal up here I need to get rid of that burn and it would be absolutely insane if I get burned on the next turn again. I don't expect that to happen but on the off chance that of the off chance that it happens that is not something that is common. It's not going to happen that often. If anything he, he must freaking burn me and create me multiple times in a row does he actually want to win. Now after you break the shield though which is going to happen right about now. Um, He's gonna reach about, I think it's 40 or 30% 30 of his H remaining HP, where he actually decides to kind of change um, his strategy. He starts setting up with uh, Bell Cup and, uh, you know, becoming a little bit more bulkier to take better moves and stuff like that. And again, it's, it, it's, it's totally fine. From here, it's just press A until victory. There's nothing else for me to do here other than just uh, wait the time and uh just keep pressing hey there you go he's going for the bulk up he's going for it two times in a row now he's a plus two defense plus two attack obviously he's a lot stronger now but the thing is is our damage output at this point is so high that even if he hits me i am just going to just bulldoze through him at this point right so again just earthquake away there is really not much more commentary that i should add even though he did this much damage to me which brought me down to about 50 percent i have set up properly and i've done everything that i have to do and uh, from here on now it's just gg well play honestly and the burn did change a little bit of the desired outcome i must admit uh because if you in my previous tries uh, which were two tries before this is my third try um i did um i did use mud slap after terrestrialization uh which allowed me to actually avoid one of uh, ember's incoming moves which is you know it's it, it's fine it just it, it is just going to take a little bit longer now for the game to end again just spam a get the earth earthquakes off and uh you will be golden even at this point even if i go down um let's say some shenanigan happens and he ends up critical hitting me then uh, I still win because I have enough time remaining in the timer uh, to the point where I can die, come back to life and just uh, continue to earthquake him until victory is actually acquired. Now again guys, this is uh, pretty much uh, a little bit of a tutorial that you not necessarily need because there is obviously other viable options, but I just thought that right here with its superior defense and HP was the perfect fit 
for Ambor. And um, so, and it is, and it is, and it is. So if you're still having some trouble defeating Ambor and you just want an easy pick, go ahead and grab yourselves a Rhyperior. It's just that easy, brothers. And Rhyperiors can also be found in, uh, in Raid Dance as well. Um, I do get a Sour Herba Mystica here, a couple of EXP, um, Candy, HP up, and Electric Terra Shards. Um, and HP up, by the way, is a vitamin that I haven't seen 7 star raid bosses drop for a very long time. So if you want to stack up on those, man, get yourself a right period. So that's pretty much it from my side. If you like my content, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And uh, I hope to see you soon, guys. Have a nice weekend.